Good morning, saints. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is an amazing day. October the 30th. Oh my goodness, we're getting close to the end of the month. And beginning November, kicking off the holidays with Thanksgiving in the month of November. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to encourage you with the word of truth where you know that you are kept in his grace and his mercy, knowing the power of his love. Amen. He is so faithful, so very faithful. Oh my goodness, y'all. It is so amazing what the Lord has done. It is just beyond, beyond amazing. I wanted to pull something up real quick. <clears throat> And as you join in, uh, you are going to be amazed, amazed in the Lord. Amen. Amazed in the Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And God is going to give you such understanding of truth to know that he is the God of miracles, the God of miracles. And it is just so amazing. It is going to bring such hope to you. It is going to bring such expectation. It is going to bring such anticipation that he is an Ephesians 3.20 God. He is an Ephesians 3.20 God. And you're just going to be blessed, especially when I find out, when I found out, when I went to the doctor for my follow-up yesterday from my procedure last, my surgery last week and some things had to be investigated it is just amazing because when i tell you this miracle it is going to blow your mind and so i am 57 years old and i've had two boys my first one at 23 my second one at 28 christopher and matthew and this is what's amazing is when i went to the follow-up a week after the outpatient surgery the doctor was speaking to me and was informing me that I have what is called a congenital uh, irregularity, a rare case. It's very rare, and it's called unicornuit, unicornuit with my pregnancy tube, so to speak, where the normal symptoms are miscarriages, unable to really have a child, infertility, high risk if you're ever pregnant, all these complications. And y'all, I have two children and no one told me. And my heart's desire when Desert Storm was happening in the 1980s, my heart's desire was to be a mother. And I just prayed to the Lord, God, I want to be a mother and experience motherhood because I thought the world was ending. And I said, God, before the world ends, I want to be a mother. And I got pregnant with Christopher and had him at 23. And then five years later, I had Matthew. My doctor was absolutely blown away. And he drew me what was going on in relation to my tubes and being able to have a child. And in the natural, now listen to this, in the natural, I should not have had children, really. I should not have. And the condition that I have is rare. And so there's so many complications. There's infertility. There's miscarriages. There's all these issues that require corrective surgery. And there's all kinds of mess. And nobody knew. He was absolutely surprised. But you know what? Nobody told me. <laughs> and because nobody told me, watch this, saints of God, my faith was just persuaded. As Jesus said many times in the gospel, be it unto you according to your faith. You know, the opposite of faith is fear. Fear fades when love swells up in you. And love is the power source of faith. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it talks about faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so the Lord showed me many years ago that the power source of all that we as Christians do is love. 
In about 2009, as I was cleaning the house, God interrupted my cleaning time and he asked me a question. Now, when God asks you a question, you know it's not because you have the answer, because I have the answer. It is because he has the answer and he wants us to understand. It is amazing that so many people read scriptures as I've read scriptures, but until understanding comes, you're at a learning curve and you can't take in and own that scripture, that truth. And then when the Holy Spirit comes on you, 2 Corinthians 3.18 removes the veil so you perceive God's truth through the kingdom of heaven in your heart and the spirit of Christ unfolding, teaching you by the Holy Spirit. Then you seize it by force. And so what's awesome and amazing is that when there's fear present, faith cannot work. Fear is the opposite of love. If you have fear in you, you have critical voices. Critical voices, the stranger's voice, again, watch the series, is the driving force of fear. It's what drives fear. And so it keeps your eyes off of faith, off of love. You don't love yourself and receive yourself and completely embrace who you are in Christ in that space. And you're always comparing are seeing your deficiencies. But when love shows up, God's love, knowing that you're accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1, 6, and in that love, you are made perfect in Christ. It is not because we are so awesome, right? It is because God is awesome and we are the sons and daughters of God. And so I want to make this point because I find it so phenomenal. And I didn't know that miracles were happening in my life because I didn't know I had an issue physically with a birth defect. What my doctor said was a congenital anomaly, basically a birth defect. And when he talked to me yesterday and told me about this rare congen congenital condition that I had at birth, and that no one knew about it, and that in the natural, I should not have had children. He was blown away. He couldn't believe I had children. And he delivered my second child, Matthew, in Alabama. And he's been my doctor for about 30 years. He could not believe it. Saints, listen to this, because this is potent. We are talking about the kingdom of God. This is back to basics series that we're in the midst of. And when you, Matthew 6, seek God, the kingdom of God and his righteousness in Christ Jesus, he adds all things unto you. That is what faith is about, is that you seek him because you fully trust him and lean upon him. You hear the good shepherd's voice and faith is stirred. You love yourself. You fully accept yourself in that space. And in loving yourself, you love others. And so as the Lord put it on my heart in the 1990s, 1990, that I wanted to have a child, he put it on my heart. And I just cried out to him, God, please give me a child before the world ends because I thought it was coming to an end during Desert Storm. And he filled my heart's desire and gave me Christopher, my first child in 91. And he put it on my heart again to ask for another child. And lo and behold, at 28 years old, I had Matthew in 1996. And I was and have been blessed with two amazing boys. But this is what blew my mind to find out that it was a miracle for me to have each son. That in the natural, I shouldn't have had children because there's miscarriages, there's prematurity, there's di they die in life at delivery because they're so premature that everything 
that happened with my sons being born not only at full term, but past full term. Christopher was nine pounds and eight ounces. Matthew was eight pounds and nine ounces. Y'all, that is a miracle. But this is the thing. I didn't have a critical voice in my members at that time that told me that I couldn't have a child. I didn't know my dis-ease, my defect, my rare condition. So fear didn't grab a hold of me and label me as incapable and unable. Because of God, we have all sufficiency in Christ Jesus. We have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We are walking miracles. We are sons and daughters of God, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen generation. And listen, saints, if you feel like a failure, it is in your failures where you can lean on God and you can trust that he is bigger than your failures. He is greater than your failures and he can turn all things around and work all things to your good. No matter the situation, if you trust in God and leave it in his hands and just have faith, have love, and know that you're loved. Saints, that's the power to move mountains. I know that you know my story about a mountain God had me speak to when I was a single mom, even when I became an alcoholic, and I was in such misery and torment and depression and sadness because of my divorce. And I got angry at God because I was serving him. And I felt like in my service and devotion to the Lord, that everything was turning against me. And I did not love myself in that space. But even in my backslidden condition, God's hand was on me. His favor was on me. His power was on me. And he healed my backsliding. And he turned my mourning into laughter, into joy. Saints, someone here needs to hear this. You are not from the kingdom of the world. You are born from above. Your spirit man comes from above. You have another kingdom from which you have access to all that God has planned for your life. It doesn't matter what the world says, what the circumstances are, what the situation looks like. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing, Ephesians 1, 3, in the heavenly realm, in the heavenly realm. And so let's look. And also for those of y'all who didn't see my afternoon video, I know I didn't put it on YouTube yet, so y'all don't know. And so the words I'm really robinizing right now, which is making up, because I feel that the Lord wants to, a merry heart doeth well, like medicine, wants to give us the good medicine of joy and of laughter. And so instead of criticizing others, we're celebrizing them. We're celebrating and speaking words of celebrating them. We're sizing them in the celebration of who God has intended them to be. We're loving them because we love ourselves, because the issue of the critical voice has been uprooted like a mulberry tree pulled up at the roots and cast into the sea. It's no longer in us. And so we know ourselves as he sees us. First Corinthians 13 in fact, let me read that today. Oh my goodness, I am so glad I joined in. Y'all, can y'all imagine how I felt yesterday? 57 years old, never knowing I had a physical rare condition, and that physical rare condition is called unicornuate uterus, which means that situation is a rare condition and the women can't really carry babies to full term. They end up having miscarriages. They have all of these symptoms, all of these issues. They're just constantly in the doctor's office having such a hard time. But that didn't happen to me. 
He said, we were not able to see it in you because you didn't present with any of the symptoms. Listen, saints, I had a rare congenital disease born at birth with this, and it could not be caught by medicine. Why? Because a kingdom that I come from, that I'm born from above, superseded the dis-ease, the deficiency of this earth. And I was able to arise above it and shine, knowing that my light has come, and see the miracles of God. Is that not amazing? And so to find that out yesterday, it just completely blew my mind. I think it blew my doctor's mind as well because he knows my sons and he knows that I've been blessed to have children. And so I want to speak this to you because when we talk about the kingdom of God and that he knows us and to know that we are known, there is a power. And I talked about that in Mindfulness Mind of Christ, that book about knowing that you're known, and I talked about that in chapter one, that there is a power of knowing that you're known by God. What is that? Knowing that you're loved. Just like my children know that I love them, my husband, my parents know that I love them. There is something about that. It is the power of the blessing of the kingdom of God. That blessing, and I'm going to talk about the power of the blessing in much more detail later. But let me read this 1 Corinthians 13 and uh, verse 9 to 12. Verse 9 to 12. Scripture says, For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect, and our prophecy, our teaching, is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect, and that means maturity and love, comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void, and superseded. When I was a child, I talked as a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. Now that I've become a man, I am done with childish ways and put them aside. And so that's a metaphor for matured in love. For now, we are looking in a mirror that gives us only a dim, blurred reflection of reality in a riddle or enigma. But then, when perfection comes, we shall see in reality face to face. Now, I know in part, but imperfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. Saints, that's powerful. To know a love that comes upon you, that causes you to know that you are known by God and you see through his lenses. So I want to talk about this particular Greek word in Ephesians 1, 6, where we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. We are blessed that all of our uh, future, all of our present, it is in the kingdom of heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Ephesians 1, 6. Let me get to that scripture. Ephesians 1. Verse 6, I'm going to get to that, uh, well, uh, Ephesians 1, 3. Uh, I did Ephesians 1, 6 earlier where we're accepted in the Beloved. Ephesians 1, 3, we're blessed by God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So this is the power of the blessing in the kingdom of heaven. The power of the blessing in the kingdom of heaven. Oh my, y'all, this is hilarious. Okay, it's spelled E-U-L-O-G. What is L-O-G? Log. What have I been talking about? Critical voices, Matthew 7, the log and the I. U-log atos. That's how it's pronounced. U-log 
eight toasts. You gone log. You eaten. You are devoured, y'all. That is powerful. Oh my gosh, that is so powerful. You log a toast, and it means, uh, it means. Hold on, I'm getting to the meaning. I'm having to comb through all of this. Uh. It means blessed. It means adorable. You are so adorable. You are so blessed. I love myself because I'm so adorable. You love yourself because you're so adorable. Why? Because of Christ. Because of God. And this comes from the the Greek word, you log A-O. You log A-O. Log, you are gone. A-O, A-O. You log are gone. That's all I know. A-O, A-O, off to work I go because you log are gone in Jesus' name. And so this word means speak well of. So if we're not critical, and it's so funny because I saw FedEx today, a FedEx truck, and I never seen this before. And let me see if I can pull it up. But it had the word critical on the truck. Yeah. It had expedited shipments. It has what's called FedEx Custom Critical. That's what it was. FedEx Custom Critical. And I went, what? FedEx Custom Critical? And I thought about how the enemy tries to make critical voices, the stranger's voice against our soul, custom to our individual life. But God, he lifts us above that as it's, out of our members, and that log is no longer in our eye. Right, Andrea? And it is gone. It is gone. Amen. And so you log AO, which is blessed. Y'all, I mean, how crazy is it that the word blessed in it has a pronunciation of a syllable that is L-O-G? I mean, I could not, I could not make that up. You log AO is where blessed comes from, and it means speak well of. So if you're not criticizing, you're celebrizing. You're speaking well of. That's what we call blessing, celebrizing. To bless, to invoke a blessing, to praise. And it comes from the two words, which I'm sure is EU. Yep. EU, which means good, well. And then the second word is probably logos. It is. Is that not amazing? And it's L-O-G hyphen O-S. The the log is no longer there, so you've got the logos. Jesus is the logos, the word. We don't want no log. We want a logos in Jesus' name. So, of course, it means word, speech. It also indicates who Jesus Christ is. It means utterance, it means work, it means communication, it means uh, preaching, it means mouth, and it means to matter. Is that not amazing? And so, saints, as we end here, and we're looking at Ephesians 1, 3, where you're blessed of the Lord in heaven with spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Good morning, Renee and Kim. God bless y'all. Think about it. When you get the log out of your eye, you get the logos. You get the logos. You trade out the log, the criticism, for the logos, the word. And you celebrate the word. You celebrate God. You praise him. And you're blessed with faith, with love, with hope, with power. In Jesus' name. Good morning, Linda. So, saints, be encouraged. God is for you. If you haven't watched the first Back to Basics yesterday on my YouTube channel, it is phenomenal. It is so fiery. Watch it. God bless you. I love you. And have an amazing day.